Craighead located two of the terrorists, who are now at the back of the compound, and eliminated both of them by himself. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Commodore Arms channel. All right, so today we're checking out a video from the Simple History YouTube channel, and I'm pretty excited about this one. We've checked out their stuff before, and their animations are always really solid, but this one is about Obi-Wan Nairobi, which if you guys don't know him by that phrase, you'll probably know him by his name, which is Chris Craighead, which is basically the SAS badass that stepped in during the Kenyan terror attack a few years back and, uh, and definitely put in some work. So we have heard the story a little bit, but an animation always kind of helps to kind of like solidify some of the details, at least being able to picture kind of what happened. Now, I don't know too much about like the step-by-step -step of what happened on that day, but uh, again, there's some very iconic quotes that came out of that and some very iconic pictures. So uh, yeah, being able to kind of like fill in the gaps is going to be pretty cool. So I, I'm definitely going to enjoy it. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, we've covered this topic a few times, but it's just, it's, it's so cool. It's so badass. So let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, jeez. Christian <laughs> okay. Craighead, Obi-Wan Nairobi. Hell yeah. It was a warm, sunny Tuesday afternoon, and everywhere people are window shopping and exploring the grounds of the Nusit D2 luxury hotel complex. Located at 14 Riverside Drive, the hotel was at the center of many expensive stores and international office buildings. I was about to say, the way that they're making everybody like dress and whatnot, it looks like a pretty bougie area. So for terrorists to attack like a, a kind of built up area like this is kind of bold. I mean, I'd imagine... If it is like this fancy, the police presence is probably going to be a little bit higher, or at least the security presence inside some of the stores. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see how that plays a part. The Kenyan Commission on Revenue Allocation, INM Bank, Amadeus IT Group, and a host of other businesses dotted the Walden property. For years, this complex in the capital of Kenya had peacefully operated as a host for tourism and international business. That okay. was all about to change on the afternoon of January 15th, 2019. As people Damn, sat that outside the secret garden restaurant, which was just opposite the Ducet D2 hotel, a man approached and stopped directly in front of the patio seating area. He was speaking very loudly on his cell phone, attracting the attention of everyone in the restaurant. Where mm. are you? He screamed in Swahili into the phone. Some of the customers sitting there began to feel uncomfortable and anticipated that something bad was about to happen. The man's erratic behavior. Uh, that's just like an average day in a lot of the parts in the U.S. Someone talking loudly, especially not necessarily like an indicator here in the U.S. Um, but yeah, I guess if he is starting to look a little bit disgruntled, then yeah, I would probably catch on and be like, mm, yeah, maybe I'm going to I'm going to skip the check this time. I'll, I'll pay him back, but. Yeah, you don't want to be sticking around when somebody's acting this kind of weird and disgruntled. Caused an unnerving feeling of suspense. Moments later, the man detonated a secret explosive device located on his body and instantly killed himself and many of the nearby customers. That's, Windows six stories up from the blast like were shattered and debris was strewn across the grassy lawn. As the smoke cleared and people ran for their lives, no one could have guessed how deadly the rest of the day would become. Damn, that's so shitty, dude. Around the same time, at roughly three o'clock in the afternoon, four more armed men drove to the entrance of the compound. At the security gate, the guards' suspicions were aroused and they fired some warning shots at the vehicles. Damn. The four men were forced to abandon their vehicle and continue up the street on foot. What are they throwing grenades? What the heck? I didn't know this was this big of like a like a coordinated uh, attack where you had like I didn't even know there was a suicide bomber that day. Then you got these guys showing up to a security checkpoint with freaking AKs and grenades. Approaching the front gate, they threw hand grenades at vehicles parked outside the entrance. What and the three heck? cars exploded into bright hot flames. Dude. The purpose of this second explosion was to create chaos and confusion within the luxury complex, making people mm. become disoriented and easier to trap. After a brief skirmish with the front gate security, the attackers forced their way into the complex. These men were wearing black apparel, carrying assault rifles, and had a lot of extra ammunition magazines with them. Hmm. Clearly, the attack was coordinated beforehand to cause as much devastation as possible. Frickin they split hell, into two groups of two and began systematically moving through the office buildings. Shooting and throwing grenades as they moved up the floors, the group Whoa. killed anyone that they came into contact with. Okay, this is actually pretty upsetting. I didn't know it was like, I didn't know it was that bad. I mean, I know there was like casualties, but again, I didn't think it was like this kind of scale, which is really messed up. But again, 
it also goes to show like how much of a badass Chris Craighead was for going into a, a, you know like a, a mess or an incident like this. Kenya is no stranger to terrorist attacks. Ten minutes into the attack, dozens of security personnel began to arrive at the front entrance. All right. Police, special forces, paramedics, and armed civilians raced into the complex to begin okay. helping evacuate the panic-stricken crowds. Nice, good job, Among civilians. those helping was Christian Craighead, a British yeah. SAS soldier who was in the country to help train Kenyan soldiers to fight against terrorists. Terrorist attacks. Oh, dude. Okay. So he knows their MO. The started normally enough. He was shopping at the mall when he received a phone call that there was an attack at the hotel complex. Immediately, this British SAS soldier, who was a member of the elite 22nd Regiment, grabbed his equipment and ran to his car. Weaving in and out of traffic, he pushed his way through Nairobi and toward the Ducid D2 hotel compound. Oh, dang! No kidding. Hey, everyone. With this kid on. Fly through the skies in a Messerschmitt. Well, now you can. All right, I'm going to go ahead and skip this part. But, yo, he's so he has his full kit on and he's driving. If you guys don't know, like, it's pretty uncomfortable. But it's also, like, extremely badass to try and picture, especially what he was driving, like, an Audi. Just driving, like, weaving in and out of traffic in this white Audi with, like, his, his tactical gear on. That's pretty freaking cool. Leaving his vehicle, Craighead could hear the sound of automatic gunfire. And although he had little intel on what was unfolding, he knew that many people were in danger. Hmm. His training in the British Army had prepared him for this sort of situation. Oh, hell Christian yeah. Craighead had joined the Junior Parachute Regiment before his 17th birthday and trained with them for six months before moving on to the program for adult paratroopers. Pegasus okay. Company, also known as P Company, is a pre parachute yeah. selection course that takes place over a five day period and Brutal. entails grueling training. Not many pass the course, but those that do have the chance to continue on to the parachute course. After graduating from training, he served for three years as a paratrooper before joining the Pathfinder Platoon, which is oh, an word. elite unit, part of the 16 Air Assault Brigade. These nice. operators okay. serve as an advance force and carry out dangerous reconnaissance missions. Yeah, they're badass. In 2003, he deployed to Iraq and worked in this capacity as a Pathfinder. Nine years Damn. later, Craighead completed the British SAS's notorious six month long selection program and became. Damn, so nine years later? Okay, so he was like, he was doing like. I wouldn't even say like the standard grunt work because again, paratroopers are a little bit above that. And then pathfinders again are like above that for early 2003 Iraq. That must've been pretty freaking hectic, especially for the pathfinders since they kind of work in smaller teams and with, you know, a little bit less support. I'm not sure how it was exactly in Iraq, especially that early, but I can imagine like they're, you know, basically like working on a sort of special forces or special operations kind of capacity. I'm a member of the 22nd regiment. The 22nd Regiment is one of the most elite units in the force. From here, much is unknown about his career in the SAS, as mm. the force is known to be secretive and discreet about their missions. What is known is that years later, while training Kenyan soldiers to fight terrorism, he made four gunmen regret the day that they decided to attack the Ducit D2 hotel complex. Oh yeah. None Hell of yeah. the terrorists could have possibly known that a professional British SAS soldier was quickly moving toward their position to eliminate them. Where oh yeah, but they, I'm sure they realized real quick, like just in the loadout and how he was carrying himself and like the weapon and stuff, once they see him like kind of go into the compound, like this dude's probably about to ruin our day. Bring body armor, a balaclava, and a pair of jeans, Craighead got to work. He carried a Colt Canada C8 series rifle, which is essentially an AR-15 or M4 slash M16 at its core. The gun was specifically an L119A2, which is a modernized version yeah. of the C8 and has a monolithic upper receiver. Okay. It serves to make the gun more accurate by zeroing large optics and laser aiming devices. Also featured on the gun was the SIG Romeo 4T optic, which is a premium red dot optic, and a Surefire FA-556A suppressor. Damn, okay, they did their homework. Firstly, I Craig like it. helped escort numerous groups of civilians out of the complex. He can even be seen on video footage carrying out wounded people and providing cover for the paramedics. Time after time, Badass. he brought people out of harm's way to then turn and head straight back towards the enemy fire. People were amazed by this unknown masked foreigner who was taking control of the situation and getting all those people to safety. Yeah, taking control. Next, as Kenyan soldiers and That's police a great established phrase. a perimeter around the compound, he embedded himself within a group of soldiers and started to work, moving through the buildings. 
Hmm. Everywhere, people were trapped in rooms waiting to be rescued as they That's were pinned terrifying. down by gunfire. However, the soldiers were not able to engage the terrorists directly while administering aid, so Craighead broke off from his group to confront the gunmen alone. Oh, dude. More video footage from the scene shows him running away from the friendly soldiers and towards enemy gunfire. Whoa, is this really an angle you can actually see? I don't remember. There's not a whole lot of footage that I saw. I saw mostly pictures, but... Yeah, mostly pictures of him like escorting some of the civilians and whatnot. But okay, I didn't. I need to try and find this footage. Or if you guys know where to find it, then let me know. I'm gonna try and search on YouTube. I'm sure it's there because again, this story is, is pretty like legendary and widespread at this point. As he scanned the upper floors of the buildings, performing a solo sweep of the rest of the complex, Craighead located two of the terrorists who are now at the back of the compound and eliminated both of them by himself. Hell Unknown yeah, to him dude. and Kenyan authorities at the time, two other terrorists remained active. As the evacuation process continued throughout the day, Craighead continued to help coordinate medical Dead aid checks. and clear floors of the public. However, during the early hours of the next day, January 16th, gunshots and explosions could once again be heard. Oh, damn, this I time, didn't know Kenyan like police were able to apprehend the gunmen and announced that the complex was finally secure after the 19-hour siege. Damn, Immediately following the attack, no one knew Christian Craighead's identity. Only photos of a masked man aiding people <laughs> appeared on the internet to give any Hell clues. Yeah. He became known as Obi-Wan Nairobi, a name which referenced his heroic, selfless actions and concealed identity. <laughs> a Black Rifle Coffee Company Blackbeard patch on his backpack oh, was yeah, the only dude. clue to his identity. Dude, I remember like when this first came out, everybody was immediately trying to like piece together his loadout and just, uh, again, it's like, there's very few people where like, once you see them and there's like these iconic stills of them, there's very few people that are like, people want to emulate that much to, again, they're just like, what's that patch? What's that gear? What rifle is he using? Everybody's trying to extrapolate that because again, he's just like a legendary figure at that point. They're kind of just trying to emulate it already. Patch on his backpack was the only clue to his identity. Only after he made an appearance on the company's podcast was he finally identified as Christian Craighead. Oh, yeah. He received the conspicuous gallantry cross for his actions that day and retired yes, from the SAS a year later and wrote a book about his experiences in Kenya, including the infamous incident. I need to check the that Kenyan out. government was also praised for its fast response to the attack, which had been coordinated by the Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab, backed by Al-Qaeda, mm. the Somali terrorist organization had planned the attack as retribution against the United States President Donald Trump because he had formally recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Although oh close God. to 700 people were saved during the evacuations, 27 people were killed by the attacks, including Damn. many Kenyans, an American man, and a British South African man, and many more were injured. While the response hmm. of the Kenyan police and army personnel is worth applauding, it was the actions of a lone British SAS operator who helped save the day. Christian yeah. Craighead had prevented more lives being lost with his heroic deeds and had taken the initiative when he had gone off and killed two of the gunmen on his own. Both yeah, the Kenyan government and residents of the compound have come forward to shower Craighead with much deserved praise and Hell thank yeah. him for risking his own life to save complete strangers. So, next time someone blows themselves up in front of a crowded cafe and a small army of terrorists start executing civilians, the world had better hope that there's a British SAS operator around to save the day. Hell, hell yeah. Dude, freaking solid video. And yeah, not only did he take out two of the remaining four terrorists, like, single-handedly is pretty freaking badass. Uh, again, like, to think... Seeing this guy just looking like super high speed, super confident, taking charge, taking that initiative, it instills a lot of confidence and it just gets people moving. Once you see someone who's just going towards the, the gunfire, going and, and you know getting these civilians out of, of harm's way, like it really inspires a lot in you. And again, like, yeah, kudos to the security forces and the civilians and everyone who is responding. But yeah, just having a figure like that and seeing a figure like that around, just, you know, putting himself in that harm's way, it really does a lot to kind of instill that confidence and just get some action going. Because at that point, you really need some action happening. Yeah, like, of course, it's nice to maybe take some time, get some intel. But at that point, when they're like actively still executing and killing people, you kind of have to be quick and you need to utilize that momentum. Um, you know, as safe as possible. And again, having someone like that really helps with, with that momentum. So yeah, of course, like his actions alone, as far as taking them out is one thing, 
but that inspiration goes a lot further, especially for like everyone around him. Now, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, but there are a lot of videos out there. I think even Popo Medic just did one pretty kind of recently, a few months ago at least. Yeah, there's a lot of videos out there, but the book itself, I need to try and check that out and, and try and read that because that sounds like it would be pretty, it's just always interesting to get it from their perspective because you can hear a lot of stories and whatnot, but hearing it from their perspective, like, it really helps kind of embody some of the chaos that that's ensuing because you can kind of see an animation like this and it's easy as it's e it's easy for us to kind of look at it from the outside looking in but again someone who's kind of like in the thick of it and they don't have a whole lot of information and they're still going out there and, and putting themselves in harm's way yeah it, it's again that much more admirable when you like really consider the fog of war and all the uncertainties that, that he was kind of going against but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. This was a, a solid one. Again, Simple History does some really cool animations. And they always cover some really cool topics as well. So if you guys have anything to recommend, especially any animations, I really appreciate the animations because, again, it can kind of allow us to picture things a little bit better. And when they do all their research and they kind of make it accurate, it, it really just allows us to kind of better capture that event in one small video. I mean, this is, what, 10 minutes? And they did a fantastic job. So... Yeah, kudos to Simple History. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, if you like the commentary, hit the thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. Recommend anything down below. You can recommend it in Discord as well, and I'll try and check it out. But yeah, uh, really, really, really cool video. And again, Chris Craighead, absolute badass. Man, when I was at SHOT Show, I went to the Agilite booth, and he he visited the booth like right after me, and somehow I didn't see him. I was so butthurt. I was like, I was like telling my wife that too. I'm like, dude, I miss... Chris Craighead, she didn't really know who he was, but by that name, at least. I'm sure she saw the, the pictures when I showed her, but yeah. <laughs> That's my like anecdote with, with him specifically. That's something I'm, I'm still kind of beating myself up about, but yeah, very cool stories, very cool dude as well. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. That's it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.